said, my name is Suzanne Vertinen. I'm from Discover Change and I'm here with Charles Uzer. Hi, Charles. Hello, Suzanne. How are you doing? Great. Really amazing. Thank you so much for joining Leading Conversations today. It's really great to have you and I absolutely can't wait to hear what you're going to share with us today. Lots of inspiration and information about how you got started uh, with your businesses. Now, Charles here is such an inspirational person. Now, I've met, I've met you some time ago and I've heard you speak about various different aspects, especially about how to create great webinars, generate leads, grow your business. So it's so uh, great to have you here today sharing these tools with us. So Charles is an entrepreneur, an educator and an investor. Now, Charles has his hands in multiple different um, and pies. He's, he's got a marketing agency as well as a financial education company. So we're going to hear from Charles a little bit. And actually, there's a couple of ways that you've combined some of that as well. So using marketing to obviously grow your financial education company and creating webinars that I've seen you help people create. It's been great. So I can't wait to hear these tools for, um, from you, Charles, today. Thanks for joining. Thank you. And if you don't mind starting, just giving a bit of an overview of what you actually do um, and um, how you got started with, with your businesses. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I actually... I, I would say in, in my blood, if you were to ask me, like, who, who are you really? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I would just say I'm an entrepreneur. I think I knew I was always born to work for myself. Um, you know, I, I actually never long term saw myself working for anyone, although I knew I needed to, to do that, obviously. Um, so and, and the journey of me starting as an entrepreneur just helped me to be able to um, to develop my skills as you know a salesperson, a marketing person. All these skills I developed over time, trying to do my my thing as well, um, which which is good. You know, sometimes the the best way of learning is doing it yourself. <laughs> you, as you know, entrepreneurs, um, we know that, don't we? Oh, I'll yeah, do it. We like doing. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, and um, I think um, for my. Um, I started my, my very first business. So I, I would have, if you were asking me what was my very first business, I'll probably be talking about like some businesses that I've already failed in and they're all packed up and done, <laughs> done and dusted um, because I've had a few. Right. <laughs> but my, right. my, my first, um, you know, successful business is my marketing agency. So I actually, um, I'm a marketer and, uh, it, it didn't really start that way. In fact, even the agency didn't start that way. I didn't really start as a marketer. Uh, I, all, all I knew um, that I was good at was selling. And um, when I, I, I quit my job, I actually just went in. I just went deep dive into the sea and like, I need to do this for myself. Like this guy is trying to control me and he, you know, he doesn't even know Jack. Like I'm sure I can do it myself. Uh, they're calling him an idiot not knowing I was going to work for the biggest idiot of them all, which is myself, <laughs> you know, because um, a lot of the times when we're going into business, um, I, I wouldn't want to say we're going into business for the wrong reasons, but we always feel like, okay, like for me, I know I was doing it to get out of the rat race and, and I felt it would give me freedom, but in true business gives you the opposite side of it, which is you're wearing a lot of hats, you know, you're, you're doing everything, you, you know. You're, so you're, much more challenging than being exactly. in, in, in a normal employment, really is. Yeah, of course. And um, I had to figure that out myself. It wasn't um, just about, you know, building websites, which is what I started with initially. I, I was just thinking, oh, that was all it was going to do. I'd do great websites and blah, blah, blah. And I found out, oh, okay, with these great websites, how are you even going to get customers in the first place? Ding. <laughs> you know, and then you realize, oh, you don't know how to, and you have to, you know, think outside the box, you know, educate yourself, grow. And uh, it, it was over time that I, you know, but by doing that, I, I realized, listen, I need to tap into, um, you know, social media, the internet, you know, because you can't just depend on going around and, and knocking on doors. Like how many doors can you knock? In? I mean, cold calling um, used to be the way at some point, but um, now, you know, we, we even know that you, you have to go beyond that, which is um, finding the right type of people. And you're not just going to do that by calling 100 people that probably don't even know about you or even have the, an interest for what you have, what you're, you're even delivering in the first place, right? 
Um, so these are the, the, the things I had to um, understand. And, you know, I learned from mentors as well, from people that knew what they were doing. Um, I, I, did, I went, I did courses as well. And in no time, I started providing the services as well, the marketing services, plus the website design services. And then I kept on doing more things to add more value to people's um, businesses. And, and that is where we took, we took up from there. So as I grew um, within myself, having more skills, developing myself, I also grew in, in terms of my business, which is great. And, and that's how I started. Really. That's amazing. And I think uh, I love the fact that you went through that whole journey. And obviously that it's interesting what you said about why you started the business, because yeah, I was, I was like that as well. You know, I'm going to do my own thing. Um, you know, nobody's going to tell me what to do and freedom, mm -hmm. independence. Wow. Actually to build a business, make it successful and have a couple of weeks off every now and then without having to stress about it. Yeah. Having <laughs> actually less than 50 hour weeks, you know, all of these things, you know, it, it's quite interesting. So I love the fact that you're sharing that journey because it shows that it, that's the reality. And, and it, yeah. especially if you want to be really successful and make, you know, lots and actually achieve that kind of financial uh, level that, you know, you're satisfied with, it takes a lot of effort. So, what, you know, whoever is here today listening, it's just, you know, keep going, don't quit because yeah. it takes time, it takes learning. And that's what you did. You carried on learning, mm -hmm. implementing, and actually you realize, wow, I'm actually pretty good at this. It's just having that knowledge and implementing and now adding that value. So that took you to webinars, didn't it as well? But we'll come back to webinars a little bit later on because that's, sure. I've seen you deliver some amazing webinars and how that's really helped people to grow their business that's helped you to grow both of your businesses and and yeah so that's really great and i look forward to hearing about that a little bit afterwards as well but mm. just just on that note you talked about why you started your business but what do you actually enjoy most about your business so you know going about and you actually have two businesses so yeah mention there about your marketing and actually maybe before you answer that question about what you enjoy the most could you tell a little bit about the trading and about the financial education so how did you start that well, I actually started out by um, reading a book. I think it's one of the best uh, best investments I ever made. I just wish I read that book probably 20 years ago. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> the, the Richest Man in Babylon, um, which, I'm, I'm, you know, a lot of people have, have read. Um, but the things I took, the lessons I took out of that made me understand that there's one thing working, whether you're working in your job, or working in your business and you're making money and there's another thing for your money that you're working hard for working for you if that makes sense when that clicked it um i think for me changed the my thought process and how i look at money right um there's nothing wrong in working for money but the the long-term goal always has to be how can my money work for me you know, so how can you produce more money, which is really what that book is all about. Um, so that kind of, um, you know, exp you know, opened my mind to opportunities. And as you know, the kind of thoughts you have, you, if, you, if you think in that direction and you want to get answers, you will get answers, which I did by having a mentor um, in that industry who was like a millionaire trader and investor. <clears throat> His name is Marcos de Maria. I worked for him actually, even when I still had my business um, as the, you know, his marketing guy. So it, it was, that was where I got my learning. And in a way it felt like I was exchanging and, and also being um, paid for learning. <laughs> if that makes, if that makes yeah. sense, you know, because um, yes, I was giving him, I was serving him and, you know, um, learning a lot from him, squeezing a lot of knowledge in terms of, um, how to get my money to work for me, but I was also helping him grow his business in the in, in turn of that with the with the knowledge I had um, with that. So it was um, I did that for a couple of years, and um, that just totally changed my life, um, literally, um, because I could see that that was the key to become wealthy. Um, a lot of people think or um, feel like it, you need to do that work or have your business, and that alone can make you wealthy. If it's true, that can make you wealthy, but I, it depends on what your perception of wealth is. And my perception of wealth is, is really the fact that if you decide you're never going to work, that you are still going to be generating money. And that is where your money working for you comes in, if that makes sense. Um, 
so that was what got me into trading and investing and uh since then i you know things have just been should i say upwards in terms of when i look at the opportunities that have come from there so yeah thank you for sharing and i love what you said there and even uh, and i love what you said that you're you are because earlier on you said really wanted to you know go my own way i'm the leader and i'm the boss and i feel that i feel that but actually really looking up to someone who is achieving such great success and you said he was your mentor and looking up to him and, and collaborating with him at different levels and this is so important in entrepreneurship isn't it and leadership whatever area is to spend mm. time with the people who are already there yes. you know and, and rather than spending time with people who pull you down and have all those limitations negative thoughts and and just all the doubts and especially what's going on in the world well you know let's not go into that but <laughs> what is going on is that people are afraid to take risks you know no, yeah. don't take risks you know stay at home and i i get that but when it comes to trading for example now i've been learning trading and i absolutely love that and i was one of these people i'll never get it I'm, <laughs> i always looks hard and I, you know yeah. i'm a just even the stupid blonde and things like these that come from actually nowhere but you come up with this irrational excuses don't you to kind of say, no no but actually trading is um i never thought i i never realized what trading was like so if mm. you wouldn't mind just sharing a little bit because trading actually the tools don't change a lot of people look at it just like me oh i could never get this but yeah. actually and i'm sure there was a time uh, when you thought wow this looks a bit complicated so but how did you get over that barrier because if someone is now thinking okay trading could be a bit of a side income or it could be something that you know I could look into it because it truly is such an important skill and, and thing to have. So could you tell me a little bit just about trading? I mean, we could probably talk about that for a long time, but <laughs> briefly, what do you think about trading? And if someone wanted to get started, what should, what should they do? Okay. Um, when it comes to trading, I, I want to first of all say there's something I believe, um, which is, um, it's also my ethos, something I hold strong um, with me in terms of, every aspect of my business and it is this which is perception is everything right um when it comes to trading people have different perceptions of what it is and a lot of it seems to be negative um due to hearsay um without people really knowing what it is and that is where i've come i, I also was like you also mentioned for yourself like you think it's difficult you think it's is really risky um but when I got into the industry, I realized, quickly realized that the reason, um, the, although we're thinking that the, you know, the stock market or the, the Forex market is actually risky, in truth, the risk is actually an uneducated trader, if that makes sense. That changed the game for me. <laughs> so, I love that. Yeah. so you that is the, the market is not the risk. The market has a, is, is there, right? It's just like um, how you could say, someone could say, oh my goodness, driving, driving is, is risky. Uh, really? Like, okay, yes, of course. If you do not know how to drive and you get to, you know, to, to get into the wheels of a car and you move on, you're, you're heading you know, probably to heaven or something. You know? <laughs> but that, if, if you get me, that's, that's really what um, I had to realize with trading that it was the same thing. And once I realized that, I was now willing to learn and, and to pick it up. And you would see that once you learn it for yourself, it is literally, it, I don't want to really butter it up by saying it is simple, but it is. We make it complicated. We human beings, you know. So I always say trading is simple, but it's not easy, if that <laughs> makes sense. Because um, as you know, 80% of it is mindset. So we make it hard. But the strategies in terms of trading is really, really simple to learn. Thank you. Uh, that's great. I love that. Trading is simple. Oh, trading is simple. People aren't. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that you know way. I, I love that. That is exactly what it is. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And this is the key thing that I realized. And I, because I used to have this barrier with maths. I wasn't always good with maths. And somebody had told me, oh, you're not very good at maths. Don't ever choose a job where you have to use maths. You mm. know, and that was just something that you heard when you were seven, eight. But these things stay in the mind. So you have this they imagined do. barrier and actually you look at something which is actually quite easy because it's not being taught, is it? Nobody no, teaches it. And it's yeah. crazy. It actually should be taught. It's, and, and I love that you said that there's actually that the risk is the, the unskilled person. So mm. that's with any business, isn't it? Is you can have the tools, 
you can be all over social media, for example, marketing your stuff, but actually not do it right. So therefore not get the result. Of you know, course. we can take a lot of action. It's like, are you working hard? or Are you working smart? Mm -hmm. And sometimes there has come certainly a time for me. And I bet you as well, just like you were talking earlier about your learning points is having to actually put the ego down a little bit and say, Hey, I need to learn. I don't yes. know everything. <laughs> Let me, but actually opening your mind that way. And what I discovered with trading and just like you is that actually it is simple and the tools mm -hmm. don't change. No. If you look at marketing, social media marketing, that changes every all the bloody time. week. Exactly. <laughs> all, the, all the rules, but actually trading yeah. the same thing. Just yeah. manage this, isn't it? So in terms I mean, of the psychology of trading, yeah. what are your thoughts on that? Right. When it comes to the psychology, as we as you can already tell, like I said, eighty percent is 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 mindset, right? So um when it comes to trading, I would always say to people that you need to have a measured expectation. Um, it's very, very important. So when I mean have a measured expectation, a lot of people come into trading thinking I want to make a million in one day or I want to make a million pounds in, in one month. I don't even make that. So I don't know where you're going to make that from, but <laughs> if that makes sense. But uh, you need to look at trading um, as a long-term plan. So in fact, a lot of times I tell people to look at it as their retirement, like, what you're what you're doing consistently to grow your wealth so instead of you putting your savings in your um in your account because when you put it in your bank account you're getting three percent a year which is appalling um you basically uh, put like when you learn the skills and you're now trading that and you're making like 10 10 percent for example a month if you do that consistently for five years even with the minimal the most the minimal amount you, you can even think of in five ten years you're a millionaire or more wow. multi-millionaire i'm talking of little amounts i'm talking of um if you and that is the power of compounding that's another thing so there's something you know we call compounding as well so it's using trading with what you're earning at the moment at the moment um with to 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 compound it to give you that wealth over time if if that yeah, makes sense. So, absolutely. and it grows, it actually grows. And that is the way you should look at it. And it's, it's, it's less, it's not as risky as you going to say, you're, you're looking to make, you're opening yourself up to as much risk in the market to say, you're going to make all the big bucks now when really you could, you know, be making like 1% a day, which is very doable by for anyone, even a beginner, if, if that makes sense, just knowing how to do that. If, if that makes sense so yeah that is that is really um something that is not made aware or taught to people a lot because um i mean due to what you see online as well there's a lot of forex traders there or, or other traders that say oh yeah i just look, look at my trading account I, i've got 10 million i mean you can do this in two years yeah, like <laughs> you know so um that's, everybody that's, has their own journey isn't it on the yes. trading and actually there yeah. have been people who can make massive success in short period of time but mm -hmm. that's not majority it's, who are those people it's the people who are ready isn't it well is that true for some people it takes longer to learn certain things like for example when i've been learning trading my other half learned a lot quicker than me but mm -hmm. still we're still learning but actually, sometimes some people just take the right action, don't they? They don't let anything stand in their way and actually just follow the instructions. And yeah. like you, what you were just saying, and actually what you said earlier about making money work for you, talking about the in interest as well, and actually putting a system in place so that you can mm. build that retirement. And not even retirement, but actually a lot sooner if you really yes. follow the instructions. So, I mean, you have a financial education company, so you provide some, some support in this area, isn't it? Yes, we do. We, we basically um, help educate people on how to, to trade, not usually in the Forex market. We focus more on the Forex market um, just because the Forex market is, should I say, is, is very liquid when you think about it compared to the stocks market. So it's easier for people to make an, an income from their um, daily or to, to make something out of their, mon their money daily, unlike stocks that, you know, it could take days, months, and it's slower as well. So um, that's the good thing about the Forex market, which is why we, we um, train people on that as well. Excellent. So if someone wanted to get started or, or just have a look at that, should they call you? Or uh, you, you mentioned that you deliver webinars, don't you? So could someone yes. join a webinar and find out a little bit more about it? 
Yes, they, they surely can. Um, we, we run webinars weekly, that's live webinars on, on weekends, Saturdays by seven. So um, what, what you just need to do is go to um, our, our website, which is fxbeginner.com, and uh, you can just schedule, um, you know, join in for the next webinar. And uh, a link will be sent to you and, you know, you can, you can join and hopefully learn something new. Excellent. I mean, that's what the key is, isn't it? Is sometimes we go, we want to start something new. We go straight onto the platform. Like mm. many years ago, I thought, okay, I'm going to start a business. What's the first thing? I'm going to create a website. <laughs> and then you spend a year in there thinking, what on earth am I doing? <laughs> and actually that is the real danger zone, isn't it? So I, I advise no one to do that anymore. It's actually to get the right information, have the strategy, yes. develop yes. the strategy, know what you want rather than just taking aimless action, isn't it? And that's really what you do as well is helping to progress strategically rather than just aimless trading and kind of wishy-washy but actually really having that kind of structure in place and, and make it happen rather than just talk about it isn't it um, yeah exactly i mean we could talk about that forever but i just really want to ask you maybe now what because i i love your passion and energy about what you do and you clearly really enjoy it and i love the fact that you have the two businesses you know it's hard to sometimes choose because you have the two passions as well two yeah. two areas but that's a great thing about trading, isn't it? Because you could literally, that it's a, it's, it could be done within minutes or it could be done for many hours. So many different options there. So it really does suit everyone. So just what, what do you actually enjoy most about what you do? You know, all of these things that you're doing and building and growing and helping other people grow, what do you enjoy the most? Um, in what you do? Um, I, I think it's going to be weird me actually telling you what I like because it's going to, um, it might not be what people like to do, but I kind of found what I feel is um, my gift just by doing what I do, which is business. Um, and I think my gift, funny enough, I don't know, it's a weird one. That's why I don't think, you know, there are other people that have gifts like singing, playing football and all that. And mine just seems to be talking. <laughs> mine just feels like it, it is actually being on stage or being on a webinar and, and speaking in front of people and inspiring people educating people serving people through me speaking you know um that is really what i love doing I, amongst everything that i do as a marketer um as a trader when i'm actually um you know in front of a, you know in front of people or i'm actually on a webinar with people there ready to learn from me or to hear what i have to say i just there's just something about it that i don't understand but that's why i love doing most of the time especially when you know um that at the end of it they're all inspired and they've learned something and you you see it in their eyes and you, you in, in, also in their questions the questions they ask you like if you have q and a you can just tell that a lot of people are really really moved by it and that's what i love doing i have to i have to say that's probably why I, I do webinars a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love that though, because oh, first of all, I totally relate to that because I think, you know, my whole life, if anything, people have told me I talk way too much, you know, originally from Finland, people are the quietest, it's the quietest bunch or nation in the world. So when you grow up in an environment and I just talk and everybody else wants silence and isolation, I'm just talking, 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 analyzing everything. You don't always know how to use that skill set, yes. do you? So actually yeah. it took me a while instead of, you know, everybody, and trust me, you know, people should choose whether they want to listen to me or not. You know, if you want to come on to our <laughs> sessions, it's going to be fast paced. This is what's going to happen. But it's actually, you know, we have gone a journey to be able to embrace that because mm. I bet there were times when, and there was certainly for me, but times when you say, who am I? Who am I to talk to people about this? Should I have been making billions or millions to be able to share this message with others? Yeah. I, and, and, you know, all this self-doubt and especially if someone has sometimes criticized you for certain things that you're doing and you think, oh, I'll never get it. And actually, I really, you know, sometimes it's where the biggest fear is. That's yes. where the message is. That's where it's like, go and do it. If you want to speak, go and speak. As mm -hmm. long as it's respectful, but it, as long as it gives value. Yes. And I love that you said because it inspires people. And that's the thing. And it's to people who appreciate it. When I mm -hmm. started as a life coach and I discovered that, oh, we do create our reality. That means we can achieve anything. I wanted to tell that to everybody. <laughs> but it somehow seems that most people don't want to hear it. <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> you're, it? you're very right about that. <laughs> I, I, I think that's why I get a buzz from, you know, when I see, when I speak, sometimes I don't even, 
um, really focus a lot on, on the people. I just focus on, on giving you the message. And then when I now see the reaction of people later, I'm like, wow, I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, one of, one of the, the, the webinars I, I had like some weeks ago, it was a very strange one. Um, mm -hmm. And my team, um, so basically, we, I don't know what happened with the security system and we had um, a troll that came on, on board. And you can imagine when you're on your Zoom call and you've got someone just drawing and and I had like 260 people on the webinar and I was oh, like wow oh, and, and, and I was like uh, I, I did, at that point I was thinking oh my goodness how am I gonna make this work I have slides there I can't just shut it off and start talking you know this the slides kind of guide me as well you know <laughs> so i just felt you, you know i mean my team really helped to like it, it was like a jedi war he's writing they're cleaning it out he's writing they're cleaning it out you know up and down up and down so i was like okay i'll just keep on going and funny enough at the end of the webinar there were still 260 people there and <laughs> and everybody my, laughing at the guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly and and, Get and, out. <laughs> and and one of my team members he was like charles man like you, you didn't even flinch like did, did that not distract you i, I felt it was distracting everyone and <laughs> exactly so laser focus, I, laser focus. <laughs> and and that's what i'm saying so i was just yeah. focused on my message i just wanted to give and it looked like at the end of the day although yes the webinar was the vehicle and all that, but my message was still heard. And that's why people stayed. Because if if that wasn't real, then they would have left because of all the distraction. You know? So Told, I love that. And I love that you handled <laughs> that and just didn't care about that because some people would be really taken by it. But the fact that everybody yeah. stayed and you know really found it useful and the feedback was fantastic. So this is yeah. the thing is that there's always going to be people resisting and not understanding what you do, not understanding what I do and so many other people but you know what? There are tons of people who do, and yeah. it's really aligning and finding that communication method for you. It might be speaking for me, mm -hmm. surely is as well, but I also do love writing and some, for some people writing is good. So if you love writing, do the writing, do the blogging, yes. don't do the videos. Yes. Then yes. some people really force the videos and some people maybe need quite a lot of practice to be natural, to feel natural and good at it. Mm -hmm. So not to force something that doesn't feel natural, but certainly webinars and we're going to come back to webinars in just a second and maybe you could give a couple of tips just on how to actually create or what kind of things to put on a nice webinar but mm -hmm. um the thing is, is is it's it's great what you're sharing because it shows that you've gone through a, a real big journey and you're constantly learning you know having hundreds of people joining this course and i'm sure that now you have a process in place that if a troll comes up so oh, <laughs> the yes. <laughs> there we that go. is not happening again <laughs> there's always something to learn right <laughs> for sure right right so well i'm gonna ask you actually next just just you know what is actually maybe has been the biggest challenge and how have you overcome it i bet there has been a bigger challenge than the ooh, troll no <laughs> so i mean that's a big question i mean it, it is but sometimes, you know, for someone else, especially hearing, you know, there's so many leaders, entrepreneurs, they have big vision, big goals. They don't even let themselves to dream big because it's mm. like, well, I could think small. I was taught to think small, be quiet, don't say this. But why? Well, why not? And then ultimately you do. But mm. you start to, the longer you go in life, you feel like, look, I should be doing something bigger. Yeah. But when yeah. you start the journey, you go on the journey. Wow, the challenges that you face, they can really knock you down. And some, for some people, they knock them down and they think, oh, it's me. I'm stupid. I can't do this. I might as well quit. And I certainly have those moments. I don't know if you have, but what has been a big challenge for you, maybe? Because it might help someone else overcome something. And maybe how did you overcome that? Yeah, uh, I would say my biggest challenge, um, w when I look specifically in terms of growing my business, or when I even got into business, when I started my marketing agency, the biggest bit was trying to find out how to delegate more and how to automate the, you know, a lot of processes within it because you, you kind of uh, think in your own head that you can do everything, which doesn't really work. And what kind of happens is like you're doing 80% of stuff, like you've heard about the Pareto rule. So you're doing 80% of things and, and gain 20% results, which is never enough for you. And yet you're exhausted. You're, you're busy working weekends, you know, the whole lot. And it's how can I turn that around? How can I spin that around where I can 
focus on the 20% of things that will give me 80% of results. That is always a struggle for, for um, business, business um, owners. And I faced that as well, which was the key thing that opened me up to marketing as well, um, to go deeper into marketing because I got, uh, there's a quote, I don't know if you've, you've heard this from Peter Drucker when um, he talks about the, the two main things that, um, that make, uh, I can't remember how it was phrased, but the two things that you need to be successful in, in developing a business, two key things. And the two things he mentioned, one of them, marketing. The other one, innovation. That's it. He said, the others? I mean, yes, we know there's accounting. Yes, we know there's this, there's that. We know that. But if you're looking for customers, for example, why are you doing account? Why are you spending your time doing the accounting and doing all that when really you should be focused on marketing, right? So if you're looking for clients, lead generation, marketing is your number one. Uh, you want to be able to grow your business even better. Innovation is number two. So those two together would give you more customers than you can even handle, if, if that makes sense. So that shift in terms of knowing where can I focus my energy on 20% and how I can delegate the others or find a way of, handling the other bits so I can focus my time on that 20% because that's the 20% that's going to help me grow. That, that is how, what you, I think um, business owners need to find a way of focusing on. You're absolutely right. And I think that's a very key, key thing and really good tips there. Focusing on marketing and innovation, especially innovation is about providing more value to customers. Like you yes. said, and me and you both, we started our businesses many, many years ago when we think I'm in this for myself, whereas actually no, and of course, we're passionate about helping people. But that shift that you're in this for the others to provide yes. excellent value and innovation and bring in these automation tools, webinars. I mean, webinar isn't actually new, but it's surprisingly a few people that are still, you know, are actually just using webinars. So actually, when you get the process properly done, it can convert so well. Of course. To get to that point, it requires the understanding of the marketing message and what, mm. what am I here for? What, is, what, what value do we bring? And so many people are the best kept secrets, aren't they? Um, yeah. You know, they, they have great products and a handful of people know about it and they have raving, this hand, handful of raving fans and, you know, and maybe a couple of referrals, but they are hitting that ceiling. So mm. I like what you're saying. So focusing on marketing and innovation and just on that then, what would you say about webinars? I mean, we could talk about webinars for a long time, but a couple of things. Why is a webinar, do you think, such a good way to generate leads? Because you use webinars quite a lot and, and provide that value and information to your customers. So why do you think that's such a good way? Well, I, I think why webinars are really, really good, especially in this age, is because it kind of helps, um, how would I put it? There, there has to be a faster way of me explaining this. So if you think about um, a client, uh, or should I call them prospects, so someone that doesn't really um, know much about your brand and all that, so they're not really aware and they come across your brand, the fastest, one of the fastest way of getting them to really know your brand and to, to kind of um, know enough to make a buying decision, that is, which is where you need to get them to because people... Uh, like you said about the ladder, the, the different steps in terms of um, the value ladder that you need to be able to get someone even mentally for them to make a decision that I want to buy, right? Um, if you don't have a webinar, think about speaking to them over the phone. Um, how many touches you, as a, as, as a marketer, you, when you think about touches, the amount of times someone comes across your brand before they actually make a purchase, that could be anything between seven and 12 times right so if you think of advertising and things you have to do to get people you know one touch two touch 12 times before you actually make a purchase well with a webinar you can fast track that if you can just get them into a webinar that is really powered we call it like a power content because it's there to really try and, and um, push them as far as possible to the point that they they get everything that they need to understand um, all their objections have been knocked away. They understand the value they're getting from you. And now it's really just, okay, how can you help me? If that makes sense. And so that's what a webinar can really do quickly um, compared to, you know, a lot of other processes. And you, you give in that information, right? Rather than relying on them exploring your site and, you know, yeah. randomly <laughs> clicking here and there, 
you're yeah. really managing that journey, aren't you? So yes. you're getting them in front of you, taking them and taking them on a journey. Yes, so taking them your, on a journey so too. Journey, yeah. You've traveled. I love how you, I've seen your webinar and how you, um, you know, share your journey and mm -hmm. the challenges that some of the challenges that you've also shared today. And actually, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it's a process, but it's all about the decisions that we make, isn't it? And that's what really directs where 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 we are today, where we are going. Yeah. And, so, and, yeah. and it's great that your and, and webinar indeed is a great way to bring people, show the specific information, the customer successes that you've already, mm. you know, created. What do you think is a good time for a webinar? I mean, there's a lot of questions about this, and you know, it could be half an hour, an hour, two hours. Is there a is there a guideline on that? It really does depend. Um, I don't know for, for those that actually know much about um, Russell Brunson. I know he, um, sorry, he he did um, speak about some lady who did a webinar, uh, but it was a five minute webinar, but it was to sell soap, right? And that works for her because I mean, think about it. I mean, how much longer you gonna, do you need? Yeah. <laughs> exactly, it's soap. <laughs> are you going to spend two hours on soap? Really? <laughs> right. So it it really depends on what you are offering at the end of the day, and also the amount of objections people would normally have, because that's really what um, webinars answer. It answers a lot of the objections for people along the journey to get them to the point that they're like, okay, I get it. And I now know why I need this, if, if that makes sense. So okay. if I, I think that is really what it is. Typically for a lot of service businesses, I would say is anything between one to two hours, a lot of the times. Um, I know even Russell Brunson's is normally like two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, that's, that's what I would say typically it is for service businesses, because with services, when you think about the thousands of services there, why are they coming to you? They have fears, they have objections, the things you need to break down. You're not just going to do it in five, 10 minutes. It's, it's not no. going to happen. So, yeah. Absolutely. I, I love that. And I mean, it, it is, it is hard and it is absolutely dependent on the businesses, uh, on the type of business, on the type of product. And actually also so importantly, the uh, service-based businesses probably want to spend at least good half an hour pitching, mm. isn't it? Yes. Uh, yes. We don't want to call it pitching. It's a bit cold, but basically talking in detail about what the product or service the, is. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. people skip that part. They give great value and it's all great, but actually the selling in the end or even throughout it's mm. non-existent so it's really important to get that message out there and put that promotion in there as well so of i mean course. we could carry on forever and i would love to and, and we have i mean you have done also <laughs> some talks in our in our um evolving leaders mastermind as well and you do regular webinars and i will be joining more of yours but yeah. just maybe before we finish off I, maybe just we could summarize a little bit or maybe kind of give a couple of tips to someone you know, based on what you've shared today, you know, if you could give maybe three tips to someone else building their business or maybe even looking at, maybe not necessarily trading, but even trading or building their dream, you know, because the yeah. trading is a vehicle. It's, it's, yeah. it's the vehicle uh, and any business could be. Um, but, you know, what, what three tips could you give to someone else so that they could take away and start implementing ASAP so that they can get bigger results in, in life right now? Right. I would say the, the number one thing, and, and this helped me as well and, and uh, helped me grow fast, is mentorship, right? Tony Robbins actually says um, that the fastest way to success is actually finding someone who has done, so finding someone in what you want to achieve, finding someone who, has done, who is there and has done it successfully and just copy them. That's all you need to do, just copy. Because when you copy them, you would also get the results the 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 getting if that makes sense right so um i think don't reinvent the key. wheel right <laughs> sorry yeah don't, don't reinvent, reinvent the wheel mm. uh, and, and that is what we do best as as human beings we just <laughs> we just know how to do that so well we we just reinvent it um it's step a b c d but we'll do a M K L, you know, um, we just do it well. And then blame myself. someone else. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's normally the person that gave you the formula A, B, C, D ah. that you will blame. Uh, all right. Like he said, I should do A, B, C, D. Are you really doing it? No. <laughs> you know, um, so I think mentorship is, is, is key. So if, if you are really struggling in your business, sometimes it might be just because you don't have um, 
knowledge that someone else who is really thriving in that area is doing and you need to go and get that from that person or find that person learn from them some people you may have to pay that is your way to get that and people are scared of pain to develop themselves i mean how else are you going to get a mentor who knows nothing i mean he's not your father he's not your mother he's not your brother or sister um he has his own family he has to feed them like uh, how else can he help you in the time frame you're thinking you need if that makes sense right um you have to be willing to pay you know at times if you don't but there are many people that are very lucky to have mentors and i have i've had a few in fact i've had mentors that pay me uh, <laughs> but the difference with that is i was literally working for them so it was more of an exchange right so um so however cleverly you can make that happen um, whether they pay you or you pay them you know just get a mentor um the the second thing i would say is um in fact this was a, a, a big mind shift for me so i actually realized that there is no such thing like the word called failure i know it confuses a lot of people when i say that <laughs> but there's actually nothing like um, failure failure is just a word we have you know put together to say oh you know when you don't do things based on your expectations or it goes wrong then it's failure no um the reason i say that is because um if failure was a real word then every single successful entrepreneur we will call them successful failures because they failed more times than you can ever think even more than you that's why they're successful right failure is just a normal process it's part of the game it's like it's just like the air you breathe you know um you're trying to ride a bicycle you're gonna fall stand up don't say you're not gonna ride the bicycle anymore it's just part of the the, the process of learning to ride a bike <laughs> you know what i mean so um it's the same thing with your business because you're gonna hit obstacles anyone that says you're not is lying to you you're gonna um hit a lot of obstacles you need to have resilience. You need to understand that that is part of the learning process. You know, every failure you get is a learning process. So really that is what I, I look at failure as is, okay, it's learning. And especially when you do fail, you should be willing to ask yourself, what have I learned from this experience? What can I take from it and how can I make it better? That is um, a, real, a real nugget, I would say. Um, I, I look at it literally and I call myself a successful failure. Because <laughs> I have failed a lot of times, but that's why I'm successful as well. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And I, I saw a quote the other day that goes not really nicely with what you just said, is there is yeah. no failure to speed of learning. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so you know. I, I love that. I love that. That's really in encouraging. Right. Sure. And I think that the third thing, um, I think I've kind of touched on that already, but is is really to focus on, um, you know, the, the Pareto rule I did tell you about, which is focus on that thing, on that 20% that will give you 80%, right? What is it in your business? When you look at your business, what is that 20% of activities that you can do that will give you 80% of the results you seek? That is really, really key. Instead of you just being busy, there are a lot of entrepreneurs that just say, I'm busy, I'm busy. And, but when you look at their bank account, it doesn't reflect that. So there's something going wrong. <laughs> there obviously you probably need to swap the you know the uh, um, dynamics of that where you need to do 20 percent to give you those results i love that i mean that is really useful and very beneficial and that requires you to be very honest with yourself isn't it yeah. it's not always so easy and mm. it's a lonely road this it road is. of entrepreneurship it's a road that i think a lot of people can do really well a lot of people it can take a long time it can take short time and everybody goes through the journey differently and whatever stage anyone is at right now the great news is you're still here that means yeah. everything is possible mm -hmm. don't whatever i love the, what you talked about just failure there that's really encouraging is that there is no failure i even heard the other day that there's a there's an island in the pacific and there's a language there they have their own language and there is no word for sadness Ooh, love and that. i thought that was really interesting and does that then mean that they don't experience sadness? Mm. 
because they say they have a word that describes it's days with less energy. <laughs> so I love it. But that's, it's, you know how we label things. Oh, I'm yeah. a failure. I didn't do this. Even you said, yeah. I, I didn't do a couple of businesses at the start a few years ago. Didn't go so well, but I learned mm. and now I know exactly what I need to do. Um, mm. and, and what I don't want, because when we know what we don't want in life, we know what we do want. And therefore we need to focus on that then. Um, but that shift in that focus on those areas. And thank you. Oh my gosh, you've shared so many amazing, uh, inspiring strategies, really useful, powerful tools and practical, you know, focusing on marketing and innovation, creating a webinar, getting those people to watch your valuable services and watch your story and hear about your brand and how you can provide this great value. So many useful tips and tools and even starting with trading. I mean, you are just a multitasker to the max for sure, Charles. So <laughs> no, I don't, I don't even know how I do it, <laughs> but I'm, I'm still alive. <laughs> and smiling because you're thriving under the, the types of problems, I guess you like resolving, you know, of course. and that's of really course. what business is about, isn't it? And we don't want to call it that way, but it's about resolving problems. Mm -hmm. We just don't want Definitely. those problems to take us away. And what you shared today, a lot about mindset, psychology, and just being resilient and picking yourself up. It's great. Really amazing. And we are definitely going to talk again soon, for sure. You are joining another webinar, and I'm going to join one of your webinars where you're sharing yes. so many <laughs> valuable tools. Um, so thank you again for joining today, Charles. Really, really thank appreciate you. it. And anyone who obviously wants to get in touch with Charles and start to accelerate it, this growth in marketing, creating webinars, trading, get in touch um, with Charles. So once again, thank you. And I really can't wait to see what's next ahead. Exciting times ahead. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's a real pleasure. Thank you. Thanks.